All right, hello everybody, it's Mr. Second Amendment, and doing another Fieldcraft episode. This is Fieldcraft Part 2. Um, if you watch the MRE video, I'm doing this right after it, same setting, same place, okay? Um, and this should perhaps be the first Fieldcraft episode, and the reason why I say that is because this is all about hydration, okay? Um, and hydration really comes number one. Um, I just showed the food because that's kind of, let's get that out of the way. Number two here, part two, we're focusing on the real important thing, which is hydration. Okay, in the military, we don't drink water, we hydrate. All right? Hydrate implies that you're doing something good for your body and that you're, of course, adding um, water to it. That simple, okay? But it's really not. Last thing that you ever want to be in the field besides dead is a, heat, is a heat casualty. You do not want to be a heat casualty at all, okay? If you are a heat casualty, kind of an issue, all right, that's a huge issue, not kind of an issue. And that's a big issue because, all right, you're, now you're down. Whatever weapon systems, whatever gear you are carrying, you can't carry, now everybody else has to carry it. And you're out of training, which is perhaps one of the worst parts. So I'm gonna go over the three main ways that you can keep yourself hydrated in the field and let me grab something else that I thought of. All right, got it. Okay, so basically we have our three main items here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my water purification tablets, which I think everybody should have in their assault pack or their gear, just in case uh, you, know, you, you don't have a source of potable water you have to get from a stream. Um, then you can make your own. All right, first thing to the left, obviously we've all grown up since kids knowing what these are, water bottles. Um, it's becoming more and more prevalent. I like water bottles because it lets me know how much I'm drinking. I don't like water bottles because I throw them out when I'm done. And I'm, if I'm smart, I'll keep them. If I'm, if I'm dumb, I'm gonna throw them out, which a lot of guys end up doing, just because they're just so cheap. Um, the reason why I don't like throwing them out is because I want a sustainable source of water containment, right? If I have a, something that contains water, I want to keep that water containment source so I can continue to use it. Another thing, and I'll get to when I get to the canteens, I need to keep track of how much water I'm drinking. Okay, when I pee, I'm going to see how I'm doing. And that's the unfortunate thing is when you pee, uh, that lets you know how you were doing a couple hours ago or about an hour ago or a little more. Okay, so that's not going to give you a straight up-to-date um, basically indicator of how you're doing that's how you were doing in terms of water and, and hydration um, and you should be if you're doing heavy training you should be doing one quart every hour for the average person now give or take generally the rule of thumb is one quart every hour um, increase that if it's really hot decrease that I wouldn't say ever decrease that one quart an hour if you're doing training and you always want to have water you always want to know how to get it usually your chain of command or anybody is going to provide that or have a way to get to it if you're just out camping or hiking all right you definitely want to know where your water sources are and how to get it water is number one i can go 30 something day or 20 something days without food i believe it's 30 ish if you're doing heavy training i can do about 20 days 15 days let's just say uh, i can only do three days without water and that's on a good situation three days just sitting at home in an air-conditioned house i can only live three or four days without water that's a serious problem if i'm out in the field it's spending calories it's spending uh, sodium and i'm out there really uh exerting myself that's a problem so you got to drink one quart of water every hour you really should and if you're doing it right your pee is going to be clear that's just how it is um so water bottles they help me keep track if i retain them but if i throw them out i'm just kind of all up in the air next thing is a camelback which camelbacks are great. Um, I'm a huge fan of camelbacks and everything like them. Usually they'll fit in an assault pack like that. This one's actually made for a camelback with some extra storage, which is a huge plus for me. And basically, uh, you know, they're great because I like them. You can have so much water and it disperses the load on your back. So it doesn't feel like this huge chunk of water flopping up and down on your hip. It actually is dispersed on your back, which is the easiest way to carry something. And you'll see, I'll do a gear loading video in a little bit, um, and you're gonna see that 50 pounds loaded out the wrong way is gonna feel like 150 pounds. 50 pounds loaded out the right way is gonna feel like 10 pounds, you can go all day. 
And if my water is on my back like that, I'm gonna have no problems. I'm gonna be able to truck that around, I'm not gonna have any issues. Third and most ancient way is canteens. And I actually have the canteen cup. Look at that, rust, awesome. Um, canteen cup in there. Now that canteen cup has saved me multiple occasions. Of course, it can be like that GI poster there. Hey, join the army, drink a cup of coffee. Uh, more importantly, I can cook something in it. I can make non-potable non water. I can make that potable by boiling it. Um, I can fetch water. I can mix drinks. I can do everything in there. It's just the sky's the limit. The great thing I love about canteens is that I can track how much water I'm drinking. I can track that. If I have four canteens on me, all right, and I'm drinking one canteen at a time, not only can I choose which canteens to drink out of so I can disperse my weight load all over my body as equally as possible, but I can keep track of how much water I'm drinking. I only go one canteen at a time. I don't mix between all four canteens. I'll just go one at a time. When one quart is out and it's an hour, it's time to start the next quart. And that's the, the primary advantage of canteens, so keep that in mind. Uh, in terms of canteens, just very valuable to have. And it's pretty much it for water. Um, three main forms that you can carry it. Um, like I talked about, and let me actually, I'm gonna undo this and show you, if you missed the first video, let me undo this and show you what I was talking about. And you should really watch it. I'll provide a little link to it. Close that guy up. All right, let's say we don't have bottles of water, we don't have a camelback, and we most certainly don't have, is, don't have uh, canteens. What can I carry water in? These, all right? You saw in my last video, Fuel Craft Part One, hot beverage bag. These are so valuable. Do not throw these away. They're so lightweight. They don't weigh anything, and they don't take up any space at all. This is possibly one of the most useful things they give you when it comes to MREs. And if you are in a fix, you need to carry more water and you just don't have a way to carry it, save these, fill it up with water, use that duct tape and tape it up. Uh, just so valuable. I can't even just state how valuable that is. So I have my four methods of carrying water. And you know what, this is all for everybody's benefit. So you know what, if you have ideas that I mentioned or uh, you have feedback or you have alternating ideas or things you think would be a good idea, uh, put it in the comment section. You know, let's share, let's spread the information. Let's get everybody out there. This is my philosophy on water. You absolutely must, must, must not become a heat casualty. Not only for your own personal safety, but because you're going to miss training or you're going to be out of the fight. You're going to have someone else carrying your stuff and you do not want to be a heat casualty. So hydrate, hydrate or die.